When the characters for right, migi, and left, hidari, are combined, it's pronounced sayu. As your iaido develops, you should refine your awareness, not just of yourself and your opponent, but also of all the space that surrounds you, the space that represents the realm of possibilities. Focus on understanding and managing space rather than just reacting to your opponent or their weapon. By the time you perceive and react to what's happening, it's too late. Managing space means managing the possibilities. There's a tendency sometimes to become anxious when it's time to cut, to get overly focused on the target. Try to keep your awareness in your lower abdomen and perform the movement as one long breath. The most important thing is heijoshin, maintaining an ordinary, peaceful state of mind. Sayugiri can remind us that there are two sides to everything. Aikido is budo. One side is bu, the practical, sometimes messy, physical reality of life. The other side is do, the philosophical, moral, social, and even aesthetic values. In budo, both in Aikido and in Iaido, we are creating something both functional and beautiful. Both martial and art are contained within the same practice. The forms that appear today in the basic Aiki Toho Iaido set of 15 were evolved over time by Nishio Sensei. The fifth form, Sayugiri, is an expression of Gyakuhami Shihonage. There are many other ways to express Sayugiri, but this Sayugiri for Gyakuhami Shihonage is the one that Nishio Sensei decided to include in the present set of basic forms. Here is a detail of the footwork beginning with a left step. Begin with your feet side by side under your hips pointing forward. Advance your left foot. Then your right foot. Now step your left foot in front of your right foot, pointing to the right, and begin the draw. Advance your right foot straight along the line of attack and meet your opponent's right forearm as they raise their sword. Shift your right foot to the right, me, and circle your sword clockwise, cutting the opponent's left side. Now turn, drawing your left foot beside your right foot as you continue cutting horizontally toward the second opponent. Advance your right foot and cut kesagiri from right down to the left.
When the opponent attacks from your right side, draw and check his right forearm. Then circle your sword clockwise to keep his arms in check as you move to your right and cut his side. Let's look at this form from the other side. Now I have a couple of rather unattractive, sketchy looking characters approaching from either side. Once again, slowed down. As I've explained in a previous video, this is one of those forms that you have to analyze the stroke order in order to understand the relationship to Gyakuhami Shihonage. Ha means edge or blade, and suji means line or path. Hasuji refers to the blade line, the angle at which the blade impacts the target. It seems obvious to say, but one of the most important factors in Iaido is the quality of your cuts. A poor blade angle is a common problem. Less experienced trainees are often in a hurry to apply too much speed or force to the blade. This is a mistake. Speed and power can only follow good form, otherwise you're getting in the way of your own progress. Be content to go slow until everything is smooth and coordinated. Speed and power will come naturally then without too much thought or effort. In this form, before we finish, we bring the sword to the side with the blade still angled toward the fallen opponent. Remember the quote from Hagakure, even if a samurai's head were to be suddenly cut off, he would still be able to perform one more action with certainty. So, take a moment to survey the situation before returning your blade to the saya. This is called Zanshin, continuing your awareness even after the technique is done. Zanshin, persistent awareness, is a defining feature of a great martial artist. There were many other forms developed by Nishio-sensei that did not become part of the basic set of forms. Those forms, and many that have been developed since, are part of our regular practice. 
Another sayugiri from Nishio-sensei is this aihami nikyo form. Cut up the outside of the opponent's arm like this. This is how you would apply Aihanmi Nikyo. Here Nishio Sensei shows how going directly to the outside of the opponent's arm for Nikyo can create a potential vulnerability. Instead, he leads the opponent out first, opening their side for a temi, then he executes Nikyo. He cuts to his right, draws his left foot back as he cuts up, then steps his left foot forward as he cuts down for Nikyo. In a moment, we'll also add the final cut as well, where we bring the opponent to the ground. Just like this Aihan Mi Nikyo, cut to the right, draw the left foot back as you cut up, step the left foot forward, and then Kesegiri from right down to the left to represent Nikyo. Here I'm adding a finishing cut to represent bringing the opponent to the ground after Nikyo. Now I'm expanding this form a little by using the footwork from our first Sayugiri form.
Now I'll add this takedown where we place our hand on the back of the blade and guide the opponent without cutting them. This is a katsujinkan form, meaning a sword that preserves life rather than taking it. This way of placing the hand on the back of the blade is called soite, which means to support with the hand. Just working with the material we've presented so far, there are many different ways to expand your study. For example, here we'll begin like Sayugiri, and then do Ikkyo using the Ukenagashi movement from the second Toho form. Next, I'll finish by entering 90 degrees to the side of the opponent, what we call a level 2 form. Now I'll do the level 3 form, where we finish without cutting. You'll notice that some of these katsujenkan forms don't have a chiburi. This finish with the blade held angled down to the side is in the style of Yagyu Shinkageru, instead of the Eshinru style of chiburi, where the blade is flicked to the side to represent removing the blood. Our use of the Shinkageru finish for upper level forms suggests that no blood was drawn. I'll also present an even more advanced form of this kata here without offering too much explanation.
Now I'll take this Aihanmi Ikkyo Omote form and develop it into Aihanmi Nikkyo Omote. Perhaps you're starting to see how we can take the basic material of one form and expand it in many directions to create literally any technique. This is how you become fluent and spontaneous and move beyond just repeating set forms in the same way.